everybody, it's me, Zach. Under that blanket is Potato, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, <laughs> it's me, Zach, and we're back back again because Amberlynn put out an 18 minute long video today. Can y'all believe after a week of, of barely putting out content of, of seven minute, eight minute, nine minute long videos, she said, I'm gonna give you an 18 minute long video about my weight, even though I'm not a weight loss channel. I think that's what she said most recently. I think that's what she's claiming. She's not a weight loss channel. She's a vlogging channel that just sometimes happens to talk about her weight because her weight is a part of her life. So she's not a weight loss channel, you know? Which does make sense to me, except when she's out here, like, dedicating whole videos and vlogs and things like that. I mean, like, her current schedule, two out of the three days of the week, are related to her diet and eating. So, I get, I, whatever, whatever you want to call yourself, honestly, I'll honor and respect that. I, I really will. As a quick programming announcement, if you are interested in or waiting for my review and reaction and commentary on the season finale of season five of the 1000 Pound Sisters, I will get to that. I think my current plan is hopefully Friday, but I don't want to make any promises, but I obviously will react to it, will comment on it, and share my thoughts. So just stay tuned for that. It's on its way. I've just had other things. I'm trying to do this thing where I genuinely do just like address and comment on what I want when I want, and I really want to take the time, especially after like such an emotional episode last week of Thorin Thousand Pound Sisters, and I know this week's about to be emotional. I like want to make sure that I'm in the right place, frame of mind, everything when I go to watch that, and I just haven't been there. And so I'll, I'm gonna try to get to it by tomorrow. If not, then Monday, hopefully by the latest. But also, I know y'all just appreciate me sharing whenever. Um, so that's why I don't want to make any promises, but it is on its way. But today, today, we're going to talk about Averlyn Reed. And I'm a little concerned. I'm actually kind of nervous because the name of this video is This Conversation Gets Really Serious and Dark, dot, 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 bar, weigh in, bar, February 7th. 2024. And I'm guessing just from like the tone of that title, as long as it's not clickbait, and or, you know, what we saw of her weekend with friends, you know, we didn't see her necessarily making great choices or bad choices. We didn't, I mean, the choices we saw her make were alcohol. She showed us like every drink that she had. And I imagine that's, like, not great for her journey. <laughs> I would just guess. I would just guess because she's not normally drinking that much. But also she was seemingly, like, out and about doing stuff. So maybe that helped, too. I don't know. But I'm, I'm kind of not getting good vibes from this. Uh, it might not be. I'm feeling like it might not be a happy-go-lucky vlog. She also did ask for more questions about her weight and weigh-in and stuff on Instagram again. Why she repeatedly does these Q&A requests over and over and over again when nothing much has changed from last week when she did it? I don't know. Like, why can't she just use some of the questions from last week? Beats me. <laughs> I really don't know, but... That's where I guess we're heading towards, is her answering some of those questions. So let me stop fucking talking, because this is already going to be a long enough video, because it's 18 minutes long, and let's just get to get to, shall we? Hey guys, Hi. welcome to a new video, so it is a Wednesday weigh-in. I'm honestly- She feels delayed. <laughs> the frames already feel choppy. Maybe, oh, I already got her on the 360p. Oh my god, I was like, maybe I'll lower the quality and maybe that will help. I don't know. Honestly, technology is the bane of my existence right now forever for maybe always i'm i'm slowly sip, slipping into the age of my parents where i'm like i don't know how this newfangled technology works how do i get the youtubes to work without dropping frames i don't know uh, we're gonna just deal with it today <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the time and uh i i will keep revisiting the the issue at a later date not sure how many now it feels better we're gonna be doing wait 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 okay over the place when we're gonna stop oh, let me start over because i think i just talked over her saying she didn't know how many more 
way in Wednesday she was gonna do. Bestie, this is only your second one. Be Bestie, it's only week two. What do you mean? You're starting and stopping something already. Welcome to a new video. So it is a Wednesday weigh-in. I'm honestly not sure how many more Wednesday weigh-ins uh -huh. we're gonna be doing. I'm just all over the place when it comes to my YouTube schedule. I keep changing it. It's literally only been like a month and a week of 2024 and I've already changed my schedule like three times. Oh, I was like, just like slow down. I was like, just this, like stick to something. But this right? particular schedule we've only had for a week and a half. <laughs> a week and a half. Now I just don't know. I don't know what's good for me. I don't know what's good for my channel. I'm all over the place. But regardless, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still going to be waiting. I'm just not sure. When there will be on Friday though another what I ate today video. Oh thank God! I filming those. I know you guys like to see a little bit of what I eat. I know that's like very highly requested, so that is still gonna be a thing. It's be wild because that. probably the easiest content she could make is if she just posted daily what I eat in a days. You know, people people would eat that up. No pun intended. <laughs> you know, that's like literally the easiest thing she could do. And I don't understand why she doesn't just do that then, you know, if, if it's so easy and it's so highly requested. At your girl has no idea. So from my last weigh-in video, uh -huh. I have a little update. As you guys know, someone in public took a photo of me uh -huh. without me knowing and then took a really creepy weird video of me of yeah. my butt, like literally an inch away from me. I didn't uh -huh. care about the photo, but the video did give me the creeps and uh -huh. I know a lot of you agree with that. Just like imagine that, that happening to like your daughter or your mom or for, something like for that. For sure. I feel like Can I tell you? I <laughs> I have a real life friend. Uh, she's really actually, she really actually is a friend of Noel's that like I know through Noel. Actually, if we're really being honest, an ex-girlfriend of Noel's. <laughs> but but she is a, a Amber Lynn connoisseur and she loves to talk shop whenever she comes over. And she mentioned to me, she was like, oh my God, did you see the photos of Amber Lynn in public? And she she was like very much like, oh my gosh, it was crazy, right? And then we had a full conversation, just me and her, about how like, you know, that would, most people would not be okay with that if it happened to literally any other woman besides Amberlynn Reed, right? right? Like that photo really, or the video specifically was like, really honed in on her butt and and if that was like anybody that was at Amberlynn, I think a lot of people would be like, that's creepy that you were that close to somebody and filming them. And so I don't know, we just need to stop living in this this world where it's like we're okay with like the the idea of a constant surveillance <laughs> of our bodies, of our person, of our whoever, whatever public figure or not. There was a big Chicago drag discourse just recently because there was a um, drag queen. I actually know her. Like I used to play on a softball team with her, um, but she is Dita Ritz's drag daughter. And she filmed somebody in the audience during one of Dita Ritz's numbers, and the person was just sitting there minding their business, but maybe looked a little bit disinterested in Dita Ritz. And people were so upset with her because they were like, why are you just filming this random person in the audience, regardless of what you felt like of their behavior, like you don't know what was going on. And so I just feel like it, it, it just has reoccurred many, many, many times now in my life or on the internet where people have been, like, filmed or photographed, etc. without their consent. And I, I just, like, want to say, like, even if it's a public figure, it's, like, uncomfy, you know? Like, respect people's space. It's one thing for Amber Lynn, myself, any public figure to decide to put themselves on YouTube, and it's another for you to, like, take sneaky photos of them without them knowing and, like, dissect them and discuss them on the internet, you know? I, I also still want to say, I'm happy to take a photo with you if you want. If you want my photo, just come ask. <laughs> Nobody also has, to my knowledge, taken weird, creepy photos photos of me. I'm just saying I would feel uncomfortable if I was in a similar situation. Like maybe taking me out of the picture and like thinking of it happening to someone that like you know that you right. care about, then I feel like maybe you can see it a little bit more from my point of view. Oh, but the other part of our conversation was also like, I, I mentioned to our friend, I was like, well, the thing is, is that if, if, you know, we, we, 
make these exceptions for Amber Lynn because we don't like her, and we say it's okay for people to do that to her because they don't like her, or, like she's done awful things, or whoever, whatever, then I think it's also allowing you to make that, like, exception for anybody you might personally dislike, right? And and that means that that might apply. There are people that don't like me, so that would also apply to them and feeling like it's okay to do it to me. So that's, like, the, the reason why I'm not okay with just, like, making an exception because it's Amber Lynn. Like, I feel that way across the board, especially if she's sitting here sharing that it made her uncomfortable. The other thing I'll say about it, and then I really will just let her talk about, <laughs> about this, is that I do remember also seeing a couple comments the last time we talked about this that I think felt like I had, like, minimalized, you know, her putting people in that position herself, like, recording people and things like that, and I, I guess I maybe wasn't clear enough about that. I do think it's fair to be like, Amber Lynn, keep in mind you have done this to people in the past. You have put people on camera when they didn't want to be in the past. You have filmed people when they didn't want to be filmed in the past. I think that's all 100% fair, and it's okay to put her feet to the fire for that. I just also am of the belief that, like, two wrongs don't make a right. Like, I hope that because she's had this experience, she realizes that. And also, if you really think about it, it's been a very long time since she's put anybody <laughs> in her videos with her, if we're really honest about it. Like, I think ever since Wifey came into the picture, for the most part, the only person that's ever shown their face on, on her channel is her. Um, so I don't, I don't believe in, like, two wrongs make a right. Like, I don't think that just because she did it to people that she should experience it. I hope that she is being cognizant of that moving forward. I hope she thinks about that moving forward. And I also just want to say I obviously don't condone when she did it in the past either. The update is, um, the person who took the photo of me is actually a girl who I actually was talking to at the laundromat, which uh -huh. I find to be even more like weird and creepy because it just goes to I show agree with like, that how too. fake people can be because like she seemed pretty mm -hmm. chill. Um, she sat next to me for a little bit. We were both waiting for mm -hmm. our stuff and we had a few exchanges. I didn't like talk much to her, but I'm very much used to like being in public and like strangers talking to me uh -huh. and I am very friendly back. I might be like an aqua taco myself, but I am friendly back to strangers, even if I do feel shy or like nervous in the moment. Like I, I'm not standoffish or anything like that. So yeah, I did correspond with this woman. Mm -hmm. And it's just weird to know that like the whole time she knew who I was and she knew that she was going to take a picture of me or that she already did. Uh -huh. But the uh, video was actually taken. Well, that's that's also the thing is like, I, I mentioned that from the get go because I, I saw this discourse happening on Twitter. I, she took the photo and then the replies to her tweet were like her talking about how she wanted to go up and say hi to Amber Lynn, but she was too shy. And then eventually it sounds like she did go up and talk to Amber Lynn. And I think that that is, that for me is another layer of like, you're being so disingenuous about this. Like, especially if you talk to her, then just ask her for a photo, you know, ask her to take a photo. By her husband, which again, it's not safe out here for women. Like, I get it. It's not safe out here for anybody. Like, anyone I feel you. can be a creep. Anyone yeah. can be unsafe. I totally get that. But in this situation, like, I feel like I am a woman who is mm -hmm. unsafe. And, like, a man is literally getting super close to me and taking a video of my butt to show online. I feel you. It makes you. me uncomfy. Yeah. And I'm going to, like, stand by that. I will forever stand by that. So... I think we are done with this saga though. For those of you who like stuck up for me and you guys were spreading awareness around the situation, like this is not okay. I appreciate you guys very much. So thank you. So now I, I am curious about why, like one, I don't know why we needed that update. <laughs> I, I don't, I guess I don't understand why we needed that update or maybe like, Maybe we could have had that update, but I don't understand why it was a part of the weigh-in video. Like, what did that have to do with weigh-in Wednesday? I'm going to answer three of your guys' questions. The first one is, what do you say to the rumors oh. that the weigh-ins are fake? I just... I forgot to tell you all that... <laughs> 
I purposely decided I was gonna drink water while I watched this video in honor of Amber Lynn. Cause I was just thinking back to her when I eat in a day and I was like, girl, where is the water? <laughs> where is the water? Uh, anyways, the, the fake weigh-ins, the, the fake or not fake weigh-ins. I just think that's silly. This is something that's always been going on on my channel where people think it's I true. fake weigh-ins because people think that I weigh more than I actually say that I do, which let's be realistic here. Okay. Scientifically, that would be impossible because for someone my size, over 500 pounds, like I just recently walked a mile. Do you really think that someone like, if I was even bigger than that, if anyone was even bigger than that, like that would have been like possible? And I just know firsthand, like, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to do the math to understand what kind of point she's trying to make because she's like, what, 500 something pounds right now? And she was 500 something pounds back when she was bed bound, like her own, her own admission of being bed bound and not leaving the house and, and not having a lot of mobility. And, and I'm guessing about the same weight and she wasn't able to do a lot of walking then. She's the one that has said that it doesn't matter what her size is, like that regardless of how big she is, that she's had to do a lot of working on her own mobility and that it, just because she's 500 pounds doesn't mean she's a mobile. So I'm, I guess I'm confused. Cause, so is she saying there's a certain threshold of weight that you have to be to be a mobile because I think I think you've been there and it it wasn't that much more than what you're weighing now. I mean, I notoriously can't remember numbers. I can't remember numbers, but you know, yeah, do you feel me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like looking at myself from any point of view, whether it's my point of view or from someone else's camera or a mirror, like whatever maybe I know that I don't look more than what I weigh. The things that I do on a daily basis, I feel like if I weighed even more, like people think that I'm like 600 pounds, like if I was that, I would not be capable of doing the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that people like to say that my weigh-ins are fake because it just creates drama, it creates entertainment, it creates conspiracy. Uh -huh. It creates just a way for people to talk, just to create more rumors around my... I don't, okay, I don't disagree with that part, but I am still hung up on her continuing to talk about, like, if I was 600 pounds, I wouldn't be able to do this, that, the other. I, uh, maybe that's true. It probably is true. But it just doesn't add up. Gosh, all these loud trucks. <laughs> it just doesn't add up with, like, what she's been saying about, like, her mobility as a concept over time. You know what I'm saying? Like, historically, she, she has said that, you know, her mobility is in spite of her weight and things like that and that like she's worked really hard to get there and I just think about like I you know I don't think that it's it's the same case for everybody because there are people on like my 600 pound life who are 600 pounds and they're definitely immobile and unable to do a lot of stuff but there are also a lot of them that like do still move around as well so I don't know. I, I, this feels like such a weird, a weird argument for her. She's also, it's also a new argument for her when it comes to this particular thing because she's rehashed the conversation about faking her weigh-ins so many times at this point on her channel. And really, I think the, the argument she should just make is that, you know, if she's lying about her weigh-ins, the only person that hurts is her. Or at least that's the argument I usually make <laughs> about this situation. That's why I don't get try to get too caught up on the people who are like comparing her before and after pictures, comparing her weights on on different years, different dates, different things like that, um, and saying that the scale is lying. Because I'm like, to me, you know, like the only person that number really truly matters to at the end of the day should be her. And so if she's lying about it the only person that she's potentially hurting and lying about it is her. Um, I'm not hurt by it. I, I, I hope she's not lying. She's certainly lied about a lot of things, but like, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of all the things she's lied about, <laughs> at least this is a lie that only hurts her. It doesn't hurt anybody in her life. It doesn't hurt anybody in her audience. 
it would be a lie that solely, truly only impacts her. I do agree with her. I think a lot of people like to just speculate about things in her life and, you know, weighing in is the only thing she does with somewhat consistency. And I do think that there are a lot of, like, things you can go back and compare it to because she's been all of these different weights at so many different times on her channel. And so I think that's why people like to go back and make those comparisons and stuff. Uh, but truly, I don't understand her ar her new argument today about <laughs> about her mobility. Like, that's, a, that's fascinating. I feel like we have not heard her say that all before. My name um, is actually very entertaining for people because it just gives people more reasons to talk and just like spew their their nonsense. Like just last year, I went to a famous weight loss surgeon's uh -huh. literal doctor's office and stepped on their scale. Uh -huh. and people were still not believing that way. So I so, think we're past the part of like, so fascinating. Also, that we're referring back to the weight loss surgeon. I'm curious. <laughs> I'm so curious if she's ever going to share uh, more about that situation. Um, and that she's now referring to said person as a famous weight loss surgeon. I think she she did say back in the day that the, the person was like um, a world-renowned or one of the best in the country. But she never used the word famous previously. So that's... Interesting. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, keep going. Like, oh, we don't trust Amber Lynn. That's why we don't believe her weigh-ins. It's more so like, hi, I'm bored. I don't have a life. So let's like say, you know, Amber Lynn's faking these weigh-ins because we have nothing else to talk about. Oh, interesting. So that's interesting. kind of like where I'm at with that. Like, I literally don't care if people don't believe my weigh-ins because I know they're true. Next question is, does it get exhausting constantly? I'm just, I'm just like, oh, y'all, y'all are so, y'all have nothing going on in your life. So y'all, y'all have to just obsess over me and my weigh-ins. <laughs> Okay, all right, girly pop. And says, says the girl who had apparently the the world's best weekend with friends in Oklahoma, but the best you could muster up to show us about that experience was like nine minutes worth of three second clips of the things that you allegedly did while they were here. Okay, all right. Let me rewind a little bit so we can hear the entirety of the next question people don't believe my weigh-ins because I know they're true. Next question is, does it get exhausting constantly thinking about your weight? Yes, because it's like, I think about it regardless of what I'm doing. Uh -huh. I think about it when I'm eating. I think about it when I'm showering. I think about it when I'm working Twinkie. Like my weight is constantly and consistently on my mind. And yes, it does get very exhausting because sometimes I just like want to exist. Mm -hmm. And then there are those rare times where I do stop thinking about my weight and I just exist as a person, but then immediately someone else has to remind me of my size or what I'm eating, anything like that. So it's like, regardless if it was me thinking about it all the time, it's like other people are gonna remind me about my weight. So it's just one of those things where I just gotta deal with it. And it's just like, I wanna be more than my weight, more than my size. And it just feels like, even when I try to be more than that and like different than that and like film different videos and that like it's still everyone's like focus and I don't mean to say everyone like as an absolute but it just feels like that is such like a heavy topic and like a all right <laughs> I, I I need to share my thoughts before they escape my mind but the the first thing I was gonna say is the way that she's talking about how she can't ever stop thinking about her weight that to me reminds me um a little bit of like my anxious thinking and not necessarily about my weight but like when I'm anxious about something um I my the the way that my generalized anxiety disorder manifests itself is in this this way that I can't stop thinking about the thing that's making me anxious and so I just keep like looping and looping and looping and looping about it and I guess all of that to say is like, I obviously can't diagnose her with anything and she also already has her own slew of diagnoses. And I don't know, maybe this is super predictable about what I'm about to say, but like, I truly think, I 100% truly really do believe that therapy would help with that, you know? Or like being able to talk to a therapist about ways to 
interrupt that cycle would be helpful to her. Like, you know, if she's consciously aware that she's thinking about her weight, like, finding ways to, like, break that, like, loop, that cycle might be helpful to her. Just a thought. She does have all these diagnoses. I do think therapy... I, I mean, it's a broken record at this point. I, I'm constantly saying that. I won't say too much more about it. The other thing I'm thinking about is, like, she's sitting here also saying, like, I'm constantly reminded by people that this is, like, what what I'm doing, what I am, blah, 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 and, and that's what people want to see in my videos and this and the other. And I'm like, with love and respect, I did already address this in this video, but with, like, love and respect... <laughs> Like I said, your current schedule has two out of the three days of your uploading dedicated to what you eat and your weight, you know? So, like, if we just went back to the previous, like, schedule type where you just uploaded every other day and it was just vlogs, and the vlogs did sometimes include what you ate and did sometimes include your weight, I think you'd be much closer to this, like, idealized version of your channel where, like, people didn't focus on it. I, I mean, I really don't believe that you're not attempting to be a weight-related channel, whether that's loss or gain, but I think that would be much closer to this idea because you literally have a, a... Your longest video in two weeks on your channel is dedicated to your weight. A hot topic where it's just, like, no matter what I do, it's just, like, my weight, my weight, my weight. That's all... Anyone wants to talk about the last question is I, I'd love to talk about other things also, just to be clear. <laughs> would love, would prefer, would prefer, would have loved to talk about your friends that were here this past weekend. <laughs> Maybe Eric and Ricky. I don't know. Maybe Eric and Ricky. I actually, since posting my reaction to that vlog, feel more and more confident that it actually was Eric and Ricky, but I don't want to go too far down the conspiracy theory <laughs> path. But that's that's my bets on who it was these days. Um, that's that's what I'm going with. That's what I'm going with. About all the plus size influencers dying. So I chose this question because this is something I've actually been like <laughs> thinking about a lot. Like there was recently a video that I saw online of this person talking about all of the recent plus size influencers that have died. I didn't, and it is I didn't so know. Funny, and it's just like, I, I didn't know that that was a thing. I really didn't know that there were lots of plus size influencers dying. I don't know much about that. I mean, I know in like this corner of the internet, life by Jen passed away. What was that? Has that been like a year? Um, but outside of that, I didn't know that, that there were like influencers who were plus size that were passing away. I have never been part of health at every size because I don't believe that. I'm very much like body positivity though. Like love that body physically, like what you look like regardless of your size because uh -huh. everyone is beautiful. But not every size is healthy and I feel like that's very obvious. I don't know how that's not obvious to people that being bigger is unhealthy. It does cause so many more health problems statistically. Like this isn't just something that people say to be just like fat phobic because trust me, I experience fat phobia, fat shaming every single day. But when it comes to like health stuff, that's not just like fat phobic, that's not fat shaming, that's just like reality and the truth. And that's something that I've always firmly believed. There was a minute there years and years ago where I was delusional in, where it's like doctors would tell me, you know, yeah, everything's perfect. Like your blood results are perfect. Like you're healthy. I do remember. I do remember that. I, I have said this time and time again. I think she has like a very basic understanding of what people think is health at, health at every size. I think there are people who think, like, I can be healthy at every size. I also think that there's a lot of people who use that that phrase, health at every size, to talk about the way that they deserve to have access to health care at every size without, like, people assuming automatically that the first thing that's wrong with them is is their weight. Um, I think it's a, a large spectrum, and, and she has whittled it down to, like, a thing that she thinks it is in her mind. Um, I think at this point, it's also obvious just from Amberlynn's own experiences that, like, she is not healthy uh, based on her sharing her experiences of going to the doctor and things like that. 
And I do really truly remember her going um, to, to a doctor. I remember that video and filming that video so well. Uh, where she was like, she was like, you know, my doctor said I was healthy. I'm great. And, and we were just like, are we sure? Like, even besides your weight, like, are we sure that you're healthy and great? So, um, I do remember that. That's, that's a fun little throwback. If you, if you really go search my channel somewhere, I'm sure you could find my reaction to that video. That was years ago, though, at this point. Like, if you think about my channel timeline in terms of, like, the spaces I was filming and living in, that's in the, that, I think I filmed that in the space where the microwave was on top of the fridge in the little studio apartment that I lived in. You're just overweight. Like, I would hear those things constantly. So it fed into my Delulu. My Delulu? No, I tell, like, I'm telling you, your 30s, your brain, like, I think it becomes more clear because I just feel like I think more clear now. And it's just like, the way that I used to think like early 20s, mid 20s mm -hmm. is like so different than like the way that I think now. Anyways. I'm not convinced that her brain thinks any more or less clearly than it did previously, but I will say, <laughs> Like her, her, her brain specifically. I'm not sure it's seeing anything more or less clearly. But I will say in general, I think your 30s are great. You know, as somebody who just turned 35, and my 20s were full of me doing all kinds of things, making mistakes, working on education, doing all kinds of stuff. And I feel like my 30s have been like, wow, I really understand myself as a human better and what I want and what I need and I can just focus on that shit, <laughs> you know? Do you feel me? So I do think that there is truth to that. I share that all the time when people get cameos for me for their 30th birthday specifically because I'm always like, listen, you, you might be worried about 30, but like your 30s are really just truly a, a, a great time. <laughs> a great time to just really know yourself and what you want and accomplish those things. I'm totally rambling, but what I'm trying to say, one day I will be a plus size influencer who has died. That is crazy to think about, well, but reality is. Okay, let me just repeat back what she said. She said, one day I will be a plus size influencer who dies. Like, she's not, she's not even saying one day I could be. Like, she is, like, the way she phrased that is, like, she's manifesting, like, nothing's going to change about my situation. That feels so grim. That feels really grim. That feels, I don't, like, I don't love it. I think this is the part where the conversation gets really serious and dark, because why are we wording things like that? Is, is reality is reality. Um, now I'm stuttering. I don't even know what I'm saying because the topic of death is one that I don't enjoy. Everyone dies. <laughs> Why are we talking about this? Skinny influencers die. We're all gonna die, okay? Whether you're an influencer, whether you're- <laughs> well, well, yes, we're all gonna die. And, and surely, yes, skinny influencers will eventually die too, but I don't think that's quite the point. <laughs> this is this is like the time wasn't it her when she when she got the dangling ankle she was like well skinny people trip on sidewalks too okay yeah but that's not that's not the point of course skinny people die too everybody dies too but that's not the point of the the conversation you're having right now what cop whether you're a surgeon whether you're a teacher like it's all gonna it's gonna happen but it's just eye-opening to see like how many influencers who are plus size have died due to complications because of their weight. To answer the original question, yes, I am worried. Um, it does worry me. It makes me sad. It makes me scared. All right, let's and do something like, about it. If losing weight was easy, then we would all have our perfect bodies. We would all have our perfect health. Like, that's just not the way that it works. For some people, yes, they can wake up one day and be like, you know what? I'm about to change my life. And for other people, such as myself, it is very freaking hard. And I know it's a lot of like up here. It's a lot of like brain chemistry slash chemicals. And this is why I said <laughs> when she was talking about making changes 
making changes to her YouTube schedule to talk about her weight more often and things like that. I was like, what is your plan to incorporate mental health care into your 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 journey, you know? Because if you if you're sitting here saying like the the challenge for me is the brain chemicals, which I can get behind. I'm sure that is a large part of the problem for Amberlynn. Then why are we not actively thinking about how to incorporate that? By the way, I've I've upgraded to the Aquaphor that comes in the stick form instead of the like liquid gel form. And I don't know how I feel about it yet, but I think I like it more. It's easier to apply if nothing else. Mental illness, trauma, like it's so many different things mixed up and it's not fun and it's not fair. And you guys have seen me literally try everything. Have I? Under the sun to lose weight. Ha and I always do. I lose ha Have I seen you, have I genuinely seen you like really commit to therapy? I don't think so. I don't think so. And, and you say you, you genuinely lose weight every time, but do you? Do you really, if like we're back at square one already again? Lose weight, but then I gain it back. But then I gain more back. But then I lose that weight again. And then I gain it back. And then I lose and then gain and then lose and then gain. It is a cycle that has been forever. Literally started when I was 11 years old. I would not be putting myself through this torture if I had an answer. Everyone is different. Everyone's body is different. The way that they do things is different. Sure. Some people, they literally just wake up and they're like, you know what? I'm going to do this. Okay, but you're and not. do it. Okay, people, and you're not some people. I get it. Let's focus on, on you then. Well, it takes a hundred different times to try it and I'm finally successful. But for me, for some reason, I have tried 10,000 times and I just can't seem to get it. And then it makes people question all the time, like, does she just enjoy being fat? Like, is just just her thing? No. I, I, I don't. I hate it. I, don't, I hate everything about I it. I hate food. I hate my weight. I, I hate my body. I hate my size. I hate the way I walk because of it. I hate be the way I'm treated because of it. I hate the health issues I've had because of it. I hate the health issues that will happen because of it. Like, I hate every single second, but I feel stuck. I feel mentally stuck. I feel physically stuck. I feel emotionally stuck. I just feel stuck and... She's made so many references to, to like the mental and emotional part of this. And I don't know how many more times I can repeat, like, go to fucking therapy, girl. Go to psychologytoday.com. Look up psychologists, therapists, counselors in your area. And let's get to, let's get fucking to, because what, what are we doing? What, <laughs> like, like you said, you tried everything under the sun. You, you were forced to go to 12 sessions of therapy for the, the famous weight loss surgeon you went to. And you said it was so great and so wonderful. I, I do remember that, you know, I guess you said you tried everything under the sun. You tried that, but that, he, that's the thing about therapy, bestie. Therapy work is ongoing. In an ideal world, therapy work never ends. Therapy work continues. And then on top of that, at the end of those 12 therapy sessions, this is the part where you really didn't try. You came here and you told us all that you got a BPD disorder or a disorder diagnosis. That dis I really didn't need the word disorder in there. That was a little bit redundant because I'm pretty sure that's what the D stands for in BPD. You got a BPD diagnosis. You went to one appointment, maybe two, I can't remember, and then you moved to Oklahoma and you didn't do any more follow-up on it. You know? Like, this work is ongoing. I'm, I'm hearing all these things. You know, I really do actually believe you could try all the diets in the world, and I, I really genuinely just think that, like, a large part of you is not going to change until you can, like, you can work on the, the chemistry, the, the brain chemicals, like you're talking about confused and lost and it's like people think they have all the answers people think they know exactly what to do and people think that if they were in my situation they would know what to do but it's just it's not that easy i don't want to die because of my weight yeah i don't, I don't want, want you to either of complications because of my weight the very thing that has like kept me from living is going to be the very thing to actually keep me from living it's just and it's just wild though because like she I, I don't know how many more times also she can have this revelation right like 
some of this is making me feel and remember, you know, what she went through when she was diagnosed with cancer. And to some extent, I'm like, if cancer didn't do that for you, because she had a lot of concerns then about, like, potential complications with the surgery. She had a hysterectomy, and she was worried about, you know, the complications with that and her weight and things like that. And it's just like, if those, if all of that didn't do it for you, I, I have a lot of questions about, you know, like, how we're not going to end up in this same situation again six months from now. And that is scary. It's like, the best way to put it is like, I feel like I died already. I have spent the majority of my life not living because of my size, not experiencing because of my size. And it's like, it's only been as of recently where I have felt myself become alive a little bit more. And I feel myself coming out of like this mentally and physically paralyzed stage that I've been in for so long and I just every day I just want to improve more and it's like this last week was like the best week that I've had and I can't even tell you how long every day I felt like I was living every day felt like I was existing and I was happy and I really thought about my weight and that's very rare for me i literally just told you like it just seems like i'm constantly thinking about my weight and my size and then the minute i stop and the minute i just enjoy life with friends and go to bars and like get drinks and then just all these things like i i come back after all of that after the high of just feeling so happy and i step on the scale and I gained weight. That's no surprise. <sighs> okay, <laughs> lots to unpack there. <laughs> and I apologize for the heavy sigh. Um, yeah, I, I think what I was thinking about as she was saying all those things about living life, I'm not one to compare the girls, to, to compare Amberlynn to other people, because I don't always think that's fair. But I also, you know, I have been so emotionally invested in this season of the 1,000 Pound Sisters. And one of the highlights of season five has been seeing Tammy live her life. Like, Tammy's really out here doing all the things that she's wanted to do for so long. And I just think about that because, you know, Tammy also went to a famous weight loss surgeon. She was so successful and part of that journey also was like, you know, working on herself and therapy eventually once they let her do it not on camera. And I've talked also about how she's grown so much and just like being able to communicate vulnerably and honestly about her feelings. And I just am like, You know, these are two girls going in opposite directions, honestly. You know, Amberlynn's talking about wanting to live that life and doing nothing for it. Tammy wanted to live that life. She finally did something about it, and she's doing it. And I think a big part of that, honestly, truly, could be, you know, the concept of the therapy part. Like, I really, I hate to do that. I'm just, like, such a big advocate because... I've seen what it's done for myself. I've seen what it's done for other people in my life. And I know not everybody has access to it. I know it also doesn't cure everything. It doesn't fix everything. But we're talking about Amber Lynn specifically here. The context of her, she probably could afford to go to therapy regularly, knowing probably about how much money she makes on YouTube. She absolutely uh, does have several diagnoses of different mental health disorders, but has done nothing to, like, work on them. And so I really think that that could make the difference. I don't know. Anyways, sorry for the comparison. (laughs) Sorry for that. And also just, like, this concept of I I get why she beats herself up every time that she gains weight, Uh, and especially after she seemingly had, like, such a good weekend, and she feels like that's, like, a low blow to her. But she can have a really great weekend with friends, and also still be working towards weight loss. Surprise. After a week of all of that, and I, I, I've i never done so much walking in my life, but as someone with lipedema and lymphedema, the more I walk, the more I swell, the more I gain weight. That's something that I 
have to figure out something I have to work on. There's only so much I can do because well, again, these things are not curable. Well, like, if, if you want to talk about all the things she's ever tried, <laughs> and she's tried everything, she barely gave the recommendations from the lipedema doctor a try. Because if you recall, the lipedema doctor, the lymphedema doctor suggested to her that, that one of the best ways to, to like manage those two diagnoses is to eat low carb, low carb, high protein, etc. And she did that for all of like a couple weeks and then stopped doing it because uh, allegedly something was happening with her gallbladder. I just had every single ingredient for happiness this last week while also finding every single ingredient for weight gain. So it's like, it's just like bittersweet. It's like the week where I was like, you know what? I'm just going to live my I life. I promise you can have both. I'm just going to have the time of my life. I'm not going to think about my weight not one time. The minute I stop thinking about my weight is the minute where things go downhill. So I'm just like so rambly right now. I don't know what is happening, but I'm gonna put my weigh-in right here so we can just move All on. right, let's I'm go. I'm going to do my Wednesday weigh-in for you guys. So it is February 7th, which is actually my mom's 55th birthday. Happy so birthday, Mama happy Lynn. To Mama Lynn. So you guys, I already know I've gained weight. I already know. Like, I treated the last week as if I was on vacation for the first time in my whole life. And I don't regret a single moment of it. I, I literally only live once. It's a new weigh-in week starting. That is an interesting thing to say after, I mean, I'm guessing she filmed this weigh-in before she filmed all of the stuff she just said, but what a wild thing to say. She said, she said, I don't, one, she doesn't regret anything from that weekend, and two, you only live once. But then, then we just sat and listened to her say that, um, we just sat and listened to her talk about how she's, like, afraid of death because of, because of what's, like, going on with her weight and her eating and things like that. That is wild. <laughs> that is such a wild juxtaposition. And it, it's just like, YOLO is, that. that is not a good outlook, you know? The reality is, is you could have many more weekends like that if you do prioritize your health. You could have so many more weekends with friends and you could go visit those friends instead of them having to come to Oklahoma. You know, you could do so many more things. All right. Let's let's hear the way in right now. So I'm just going to be happy that I even woke up alive living. I created memories last week. But anyways, I could ramble on about that forever. Let's just step on the scale. Hello. It's ready. 515.0 pounds. Oh, so she's... All right, so 515.0. She's essentially, I think, I mean, I would have to go back and look at her calendar that I'm pretty sure she's not using anymore, but I think 215 pounds is where she started January at. I think that's where the whole year began. Yeah. Yeah. I had a feeling that was going to happen. So as you can see, I did gain weight because last week I was 508.8. And since I was 515.0 today, I gained 6.2 pounds of salt, water retention, calories. I I drank my calories a lot this week. She did have I'm a lot of really beverages. Really that does that. I drink a lot of like diet and um, diet Gatorades or Gatorade Zero, whatever you want to call them. So I do a lot of that. So drinking my calories, not a good idea because your girl has retained a lot of water. My goal for last week originally was to cook more and I was not successful with that goal at all. So my goal for this week is to simply just like make better choices. That's super important that I do that. That's Whether such a vague goal. The food that I eat while I'm at a restaurant or the food that I make at home because a lot of people are just like, you know what, cook more at home. Like you're going to do so much better, but you, you don't realize that like I can cook at home just fine, but it's like, it's still like the choices that I have to make. Like, you know how easy it would be for me to make like a whole box of hamburger helper and like eat yeah. that and be like, Oh, it's totally fine because like, okay. Well, first of all, 
when was the last time you sh- you showed yourself making a whole box of hamburger helper? <laughs> like, like, is that what you're doing when you're not not filming? Because I don't know that I've seen you make a whole box of hamburger helper ever. To be honest with you, but also I think I think when people suggest that you cook at home, eat at home, whatever it might be, however you want to word it. Their, their point is that you yourself have said that, like, fast food or takeout or ordering on the Uber Eats or the DoorDash or whichever app you use is a thing that is a, a like, trigger for you. And so I think that that's part of the suggestion. And yet here we are. I mean, I literally think this time last year you were trying to do a no-takeout challenge, if I remember correctly, okay? Like, that's... That's why people are suggesting don't do it because you've told us that it's not good for you. I cook that at home, but that's more calories than me getting like, say, a meal from McDonald's. You know, are just are we sure? On the meal, of course, but it's not always cook at home. Cooking at home doesn't automatically make something healthy. I would like to be delusional and think that, and I'm sure there was an era of my life where I did think that way. But it's just not realistic. I, I think you're being delusional about this all, period. <laughs> I think you're, you're acting like when, when people say you should cook at home, like you don't know why they're saying that to you. You're delusional. You're trying to like work out in your mind and make it okay for you to order takeout when you yourself have told us that like takeout is a problem for you no matter how healthy it is. Because there's so many things that you can cook at home that are just as bad as getting takeout. And there yeah. are takeout things that you can get. That's, that is she one. She is so trying to justify her her relationship with takeout food right now. And it's maddening. Like, I I, I kind of want to rage quit. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hear her out. A healthier than whatever it is you're cooking at home. So it's all about making better choices. That is like literally my goal, whether it's cooking at home or I'm ordering the takeout or whatever it may be. Why, why, not, just why make, not make good choices and cook at home, you know? Better choices, whether that be the liquids I'm drinking and the food I'm eating. I want to, you know, pick more vegetables, have a little bit more fruit, truly just like Drink some water. feed my body better things, things that'll make me feel better and hopefully it'll show up on a scale next week. Um, is there gonna be a way in next Wednesday? Who knows? I know for me there's going to be because I'm really focusing this year. She's on so losing those irritating. Pounds. And you you've really been focusing this year on losing those hundred pounds? Did we not are we not back to the weight that we were at the beginning of this? How hard have you been focusing on it? Um, honestly, I'm only down 0.8 of those pounds, but I know that I can still do it. I know that's possible. I know I sound like a joke. I know a lot of people are probably laughing at me. I'm not laughing. I don't think it's funny. And that is something that I love about myself. And I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trying. And I know for a lot of people, you guys have been watching me try and fail, try and fail for years. Literally, it's been a decade on YouTube where I have done nothing but fail when it comes to my weight loss. And I know it's so easy to look at me as just that, like someone who has failed so hard on her weight loss, but like, I'm so much more than that. And I think that's why I'm like, do I really want to keep these weigh-ins on my channel? Like, what do I want on my channel? Like, I'm super confused because I don't want it to be super weight focused, but I still want to share my journey with you guys. Then, so it's like- then do, then do what you are doing. You don't have to dedicate a whole video to the, to the weigh-ins. I'd prefer you didn't. I mean, I know I'm just one person, but like, you don't have to do that. It's confusing up here in the brain. Anyways. You're confusing up here in the brain so for me. Video, I don't understand. Really that's about moments like this. I should just like live stream. But anyways, I hope that you no, guys did please this don't. video. please don't. I'll see the next one. <laughs> for what I ate today. All right. I, okay. I hate live stream era. I, I prefer we never. Um, <laughs> oh, is there anything left to say? This is, this is the longest video I've also posted in recent history. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna wrap it up. But wow, what, what a journey. <laughs> What a journey for us to have uh, to uh, to have made together today. Fascinating. Anyways, that's all I have time for today. So I hope you all enjoyed today's video. 
Uh, if you're brand new, consider subscribing down below. Hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post a new video. Leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow me on all my social media. I had so much fun today. I Well, I don't know, did I? Uh, I love you all so much. I hope to see y'all next time, and bye-bye. Uh, bye! -bye. bye! <laughs>